you about, let's see, uh, Jack Kirby story, when you met Jack Kirby. Oh, yeah, well, uh, I was about 19, mm -hmm. and uh, I was at a con in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, it was 1973, I think, 1974, maybe. And I was uh, standing out on the uh, in front of the hotel. I was with a couple of friends, one of whom was Jeff Darrow, and uh, we were going out on the town, and we were just we we were we were just fans, you know. We we loved comics. We uh, we idolized all these guys, and Kirby was one of our heroes. And uh, we were standing out on the on the on Forty Second Street, trying to decide where we were going to go. And uh, Jack Kirby came walking out of the revolving door, and he's standing there. And we said, "Look, it's 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 Mr. Kirby right there." <laughs> and uh, so we you know timidly approached him and started uh, talking with him. And, you know, he was so gracious and, and accessible. And uh, I, I decided to say, uh, and I was kidding, but I said, uh, hey, Mr. Kirby, we're, we're going to go out on the town here tonight. You, you want to join us? And he was, he was lighting a cigar at the time. And he said, right. uh, well, there's a problem with that, boys. Either I'm too old or you're too young. <laughs> and uh, he said, "But if you if you want to bring your artwork around to my uh, around to my room and show me what you're working on, you know we've had all our stuff with us." <laughs> and of course, we didn't take him up on it. But right. uh, he was just you know so so nice. And uh, see, that's the that's the sort of thing I'm talking about right. in terms of uh, you know paying it forward. You couldn't find a more gracious and uh, humble guy than 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 Jack Kirby. Uh, and that, that really made a big impression on me. And when I was out at the con in New York a couple of weeks ago when we met, mm -hmm. uh, that occurred to me because I see so many uh, young fellas now at the cons that are, you, you know, they come over to me and they want to look at my artwork and stuff. And they may be, you know, 19, 20 years old. And uh, it occurred to me that now I'm at that age we're either they're too young or I'm too old. I <laughs> myself right where Kirby is, and it's uh, it, it, it makes me pull on my collar a little bit because it makes me realize just how quickly time flies. Wow. Um, and because Kirby, he was probably about maybe 56 or 57 then. I was 19, and, and I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be well, I'm 59. I'm going to be 60 in a, in a couple of months. Congratulations! So I, I'm sir. older than Kirby was right. back then. It's hard to believe. I can't wrap. It <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Yeah, <laughs> it was 40 years ago. Oh man. Well, we thank you for those years, especially all the years that we, you know, you, you took the time to to create and um, share it with us. So well, we, uh, we appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Yep. All right, cool. Well, everyone, you're watching Eclectica. Oh, and um, Crystal Black, Black Crystal says that uh, it was a pleasure meeting you. Well, it's just... a pleasure to see her. I yep. have to look into some of these shows and videos she was talking yeah, about. Yeah, man. I'll never sleep again. <laughs> I know. You see all the energy she has, right? You'll, you'll be up. I'll, I'll, I'll never stop crying. <laughs> Thanks again. And again, everybody, you're, you're, you're watching Eclectica. Crystal Black or Black Crystal. How you doing? Good. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> and we have our man Dean, and he looks like a little shaped um, egghead. How you doing, Dean? <laughs> Hi, Harry. How are you? <laughs> um, we have today. We have a little. I'm having a little technical difficulty today, so I'm, I have to apologize to everyone and to apologize to our honored guest today. Uh, we're honored to have the Eisner Award-winning illustrator, penciler, inker, 
Mr. Gary Gianni. Welcome to the show, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. Glad, glad to be here. This is like being uh, at a comic convention, only uh, uh, I don't have to have my pants on. <laughs> Like, uh, what I'm doing on this end, no one can see me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who knows what you're wearing? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Gary hails from Chicago, and he went to Chicago's Academy of Fine Arts. And um, where did you begin after that, Gary? When, when did you begin illustrating? Uh, well, that was uh, back in the 70s. Uh, my first job was a, a courtroom artist. Uh, covering a lot of uh, murder trials, uh, which culminated, I suppose, in the John Gacy trial back in uh, 1980. Wow. Uh, you know, Chicago is a big town for violence. And uh, I think, uh, well, even yesterday, did you guys see uh, the flying Walenda walk across the uh, towers? Talk about superheroes. Yes. Um, I actually posted that picture on our website. That was the, just the scale of that thing was chilling. Um, I really enjoyed that. Um, I think this is a great town. There's a lot of artists here, a lot of really talented people, and I'm I, I've always lived here. That's amazing. And um, you went on to uh, illustrate my. Uh, I, I've always praised the pulp heroes on our show. And you want to illustrate many of uh, my favorite uh, pulps of all time. Uh, mm -hmm. Tarzan, Doc Savage, The Shadow, mm -hmm. and a whole cast of characters created by the prolific Robert E. Howard. Right. Um, which one was your favorite? Uh, I'd have to say Solomon Cain. Be uh, and that was the first book in that Wandering Star series of uh, Howard's work. Uh, I went on to do Bran McMoran, of course, and Conan as well. But Solomon Kane was the was the guy I think I um, I, I felt closest to. Um, uh, he was uh, a thin, skeletal character, and I was even able to use myself as a model. <laughs> Whereas I couldn't do that with Conan, of course. Um, uh, Conan, you know, he's been arguably he's probably one of the most uh, heavily illustrated characters of all the Howard stuff. So there's not a lot you can do with him in terms of uh, a different take, I suppose. He's a bit like uh, he's a bit like Frankenstein. I'm not quite sure what you can do with some of these iconic characters anymore. Uh, so you have to look for side areas to try and uh, do something a little different. Um, does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, I got, uh, after the con, when I met you, um, I picked up that great plate of Solomon King. Um, um, we actually have that picture, Mike can post it, of, um, him, um, fighting with a couple other guys. And it's just an incredible piece of, of, of work. Um, you know the one I'm talking about, right? The one with the um, the, the the mural in the background and, and his shadows up against oh, the oh background. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the uh, cover of the uh, collectible book, which yes, not a lot of people see these books. I mean, I don't know if if you um, have visual here on me, but uh, these books, which uh, came slipcased and uh, were uh, fairly expensive at the time, uh, were really very nicely produced books. Uh, of course, they came out in trade editions later on, but they were never quite as nice as the uh, original books with, with the original plates and all the, uh, the color plates, um, such as the opening here, the, this sort of thing. Um, I think the trade editions are fine, but uh, these books were really special. They even came with other things, everything fell out of this uh, uh, slip case. It's like a Swiss Army knife. You get an extra set of plates. They even had a CD in these things with uh, a British actor reading the poems of Howard, of Solomon Cain, and it's really cool. Not, not too many people uh, are aware of just how nice this, this book really was because they only printed um, a thousand copies of it. And uh, now, 
uh, I think you might be able to find one for four or five hundred dollars online, but uh, I, I'm sorry that uh, more people weren't able to see the uh, the collectible edition. How long did they take it to uh, make that plate? I mean, it's so. Um, they those paintings took about a month apiece. A month apiece. Wow. And, uh, not not to mention the fact that um, uh, there are almost 200 black and white penline illustrations in there, as well as eight paintings. So each one of those books, the Solomon Cain.